Hello, good afternoon. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our webinar on Area Send, our new instruction framework. Uh, my name is Catherine Rudd. Uh, I am the specialist advisor for Area Send for Ofsted. And over to you, Lee. Hi, everyone. My name is Lee Carey, and I'm the specialist advisor for Send at CQC. Okay, in terms of the outline of the session, uh, we're going to introduce the new framework and the development work that we've done. We're going to talk through our priorities and we're going to broaden the focus of the inspection, strengthen, talk about strengthening accountability, talk about consultation involvement and questions. But before we do that, I just want to say our public consultation, it's now open and you'll find it on gov.uk and we're also going to circulate the link after this webinar. Our consultation explains our new area SEND framework in more depth, as well as outlining our proposals. On the consultation site, you're also going to be able to find a draft framework uh, and handbook and a strategic commentary from Her Majesty's Chief Inspector. And that's in relation to both our consultation on the new area SEND framework and the recent SEND review. So from, from our perspective, feedback from people working or involved in the sector is, is absolutely central. Our consultation and, uh, and the activities we're doing have been designed to capture the views of those of you who are at the centre of the SEND system. Uh, and through our online consultation, you've got the opportunity to provide us with feedback on our proposals. Uh, and we really encourage you to do this. We, we'd really, really like to hear from you. Uh, so please share the public consultation link with your colleagues, anyone you know in the SEND sector, including parents, carers, children, young people you work with. Uh, and just to say there is a children and young people's version of the consultation, which is accessible from the same site. So as well as our public uh, online public consultation, we're going to conduct different uh, engagement activities with a range of stakeholders. So uh, including those of you who work or are involved with the SEND sector, parents, uh, carers, children, young people with SEND. And we're going to do things like webinars like this one and also a series of focus groups. And our webinars will be recorded and available for access through our Ofsted YouTube channel. So we really also want to use these focus groups to explore specific aspects of our inspection process and our methodology. I just wanted to just to pick that up and really, really highlight how important it is to us that you get to, to give us your feedback. Um, some of you have already asked. This is the broad timeline that we've got for introducing the new Area Send framework. So following the public consultation, um, we're planning to publish our final framework in late 2022 and then inspections begin in early 2023. And so the consultation closes on the 11th of September. Thank you. So talking about developing the new framework, uh, we've been developing uh, the framework, as we've said, to be implemented in 2023. And although our um, in full inspections underneath the current framework have now been completed. We just want to say there'll be no accountability gap between inspection frameworks as we'll continue to revisit local areas across the summer and the autumn terms in 2022. And over the last two years, we've, we've really engaged with representatives from the sector. So bodies representing children, young people with SEND and their parents and carers. Uh, and this work has really enabled us to develop and refine our proposals. And we've also been testing aspects of our methodology through discussions with local area partnerships. Uh, we've been doing specific development activities and a range of pilot inspections. And up until now, we've been evaluating how well local areas have implemented the 2014 SEND reforms. And moving forward, we're going to continue to evaluate this. But more importantly, we're going to focus on the impact that local areas send strategy and their commissioning arrangements have had on the experiences and outcomes of children, and young people with send in their local area. 
We've redesigned our methodology to strengthen accountability, uh, including a continuous cycle of inspection, new inspection outcomes, and more visibility on recommendations and plans for improvement. And finally, we're really mindful that our development of the new framework is taking place alongside a wholesale review of the SEN system. It's also taking place against reforms such as integrated care systems. So the new framework is designed to align with the broad aims of the SEN review, aiming to promote continuous improvement in the sector through our inspection activity. But we are aware that when the changes from the SEN review are implemented and reforms, as I've said, around integrated care systems are established, we will need to update the framework to reflect these new arrangements. So, talking through our priorities, um, our new framework uh, aims to promote improvement in the lives of children and young people with SEN. That is what it's about. So in terms of broadening the focus of inspections, given the range and the depth of the reforms in the 2014 Act, the framework and inspection methodology we introduced in 2016 placed considerable focus on the extent to which local areas were meeting their statutory duties described in the SEN Code of Practice. And the new framework aims to build on this but also place more focus on the experiences of children and young people with SEND. I'll talk a bit more about how we're going to do that as we move forwards. In terms of strengthening accountability, we're planning, as I've said before, to introduce a continuous inspection cycle with clearer outcomes and requesting visible action plans from local areas. So, looking at our focus, we're looking at the focus on the impact of local area leadership. So, we really want to focus more on the impact that local area SEND arrangements are having on the lives of children and young people with SEND. So, as you'll be able to see in our consultation, we're proposing that inspectors evaluate the extent to which children and young people with SEND have their needs identified accurately and whether their needs are assessed in a timely way. So where possible, they're prevented from escalating. We want inspectors to look at how children and their families participate in decision-making. Do they get useful information and advice to understand their rights and be able to make informed choices? whether children and young people receive the right help at the right time, and whether those plans change as their needs and their aspirations change. Whether children and young people are well prepared for their next steps, whether their ambitions are known and being worked towards, whether they're developing the skills that they need for their adult lives. And finally, whether children and young people are valued, visible and included in their communities whether they understand what is available to them, uh, how they can access this, and whether they're supported if they need to take part. And this was absolutely central for the young people that we've been working with um, to develop this framework as being visible, uh, valued, and included in their communities. Okay, so moving on. Uh, we want to look at how the local area partnership work together to improve the experiences and outcomes of children and young people with SEND. So we want to see whether uh, local area leaders are ambitious for children and young people. Do they have a shared strategy with clearly defined outcomes? Do they challenge each other to improve? Does the local partnership actively engage with children, young people and their families? Do they use the feedback to develop their approach and their services? Do they have an accurate understanding of children and young people's needs? And do they include the perspectives from young people and their families? Do they commission services which meet needs and also the aspirations of children and young people? Do they know what works? And do they make effective use of their combined resources? And do they evaluate services and work together to make improvements? 
And finally, how do they create an environment for effective practice and multi-agency working to flourish? How do they enable practitioners to work together around a child or young person? So we want our, our framework and inspection methodology to enable inspectors to understand and report on what it's like to be a child or young person with SEND. To do that, we've made some changes to our approach and to our methodology. So our inspections have always taken account of the views of children and young people and their parents and carers. So for example, through meetings and discussions with groups while inspectors have been on site. However, the changes that we're introducing within this framework will allow for greater opportunities for inspectors to engage with children and young people directly and gather a wide range of evidence about their experiences. And this includes meetings with a number of children and young people, uh, maybe with their parents and carers and their practitioners. And these in-depth discussions really enable inspectors to get a first-hand view of what it's like to be a child or young person in that area. It's also proposed that inspectors will undertake sampling meetings in education, in health and in care settings. So those are meetings with practitioners and reviewing a wider group of children and young people. This helps inspectors develop their lines of inquiry. So the things that they're thinking about as they're going through the inspection. We're also proposing to extend our surveys. We've always conducted a survey for parents and carers. And we're now extending this, or we're proposing to extend this, to children and young people with SEND aged 11 to 25, and also professionals across education, health and social care settings. The evidence that inspectors identify through these activities will be reviewed and triangulated with evidence gained through additional on-site activities. So this might be meetings with leaders, discussions with children and young people, parents and carers and practitioners. We also um, want to place greater emphasis on the experiences of children, uh, children and young people who attend alternative provision, 80% of whom are identified as having special educational needs disabilities. And at their best, alternative provision settings are experts in getting children dealing with difficult challenges back on track. However, we're concerned that sometimes alternative provision is used to supplement the SEND system, or as a temporary placement while children wait for an education, health and care plan assessment. So we think by increasing our focus on alternative provision, we'll be better able to identify and report on any practices like this. And this also better aligns with the vision of an integrated AP and SEND system that the government set out in the SEND review. And I must say at this point, we will continue to inspect within the current legal framework until any legislative changes come into force. And we're proposing that inspectors will gather evidence about the local authority strategy for alternative provision, including commissioning arrangements. They'll also include children and young people with SEND who are to attend alternative provision as part of those sort of in-depth meetings and also the sampling visits that we're going to do and other evidence gathering activities that they undertake during inspection. And finally on this slide, we're now uh, really pleased to say we're including a social care uh, HMI in, in all of these um, inspections so we can gather a more holistic view of the impact of local SEND services and systems. So that's all for me and I'm gonna hand over to Lee at this point. Thanks, Catherine. So I'm going to take you through our proposals for strengthening accountability and, and driving improvement um, for children and young people with, with SEND. And through this new framework that we're proposing, we're aiming to increase accountability in the SEND system and act as a catalyst for improvement. And we intend to do that through a continuous cycle of inspections. And we do feel that now is a timely point to, to introduce um, a new framework with a, with a wider scope that will strengthen accountability because we know that after the pandemic of the last two years children and young people with 
special needs um, have been disproportionately affected. So this is another reason that we want to ensure that in line with other consultations that are running, that we get um, your views on the, the proposed methodology that we are discussing today. And one of those proposals is regarding a continuous cycle of inspection. So the new inspection system that we are proposing will have a number of different elements and the elements will um, link and feed into ongoing and, and onward inspection activity. So areas will have a full inspection, some areas will also have monitoring inspections and all areas will be part of a cycle of engagement meetings in addition to full inspections and monitoring inspections. So I'll take you through some of the detail that we're proposing. So all areas would have a, um, a full inspection, looking at the focus that Catherine has taken us through already in the presentation. And that full inspection will evaluate and report on the impact of the local area partnership strategy and commissioning and how that impacts on the, on the experience and outcomes of children and young people with the SEND. The frequency of the full inspection will be determined by the previous inspection outcome. So the previous inspection within this framework, not prior inspection activity um, under the, the framework that, that uh, we are currently running. So the new inspection system, once an area has a full inspection, that will then um, lead on to any follow-up activity. And that, that is how we are proposing to evaluate the impact um, of, of areas and, um, and their impact on children and young people. In addition, there will be monitoring inspections, specifically where we can evaluate progress in areas where widespread or systemic weaknesses have been identified via a full inspection. And we're proposing that these would happen approximately 18 months after a full inspection. And they will make a judgment with whether or not an area and partnership are making effective progress. And we'll talk a little bit about the um, the outputs of some of these inspections uh, in a second. The third part of, of the inspection system we are proposing are the engagement meetings. And these would be regular engagement meetings involving the whole partnership in areas and inspectors so that area leaders can present the, the, the current um, landscape in areas. We know that, um, as, as Catherine said, under the, the current consultation on the SEND review, there is likely to be significant change in the health, education and care landscape over the next five years. And these engagement meetings will allow inspectors to be updated on the local area arrangements and to ensure that all area partnerships have ongoing strategic plans in place for children and young people with SEND. And these will be discussed at the engagement meetings. So these are in addition to the inspection activity. So these are the three different types of inspection activity that we are proposing in the new framework. As I said, the inspection activity will be dictated by the inspection outcomes of the previous full inspection. And we plan to make performance of local areas much clearer for everybody involved by introducing three distinct inspection outcomes, which will provide some more precise recommendations. So the current reporting style, as you'll be aware, is either an area has a written statement of action or it doesn't. We are proposing to extend the, the style of reporting so that will also include specific recommendations to various parts um, of the, the partnership and the system through these various inspection activities. So I'll take you through what the three possible inspection outcomes are. The top one is where the area partnership send arrangements typically lead to positive experience and outcomes for children and young people. And in that scenario, the, the next area full inspection would be within five years, approximately five years. The second outcome is where the area partnership send arrangements lead to inconsistent experience and outcomes for children and young people, and the local partnership must work jointly to make improvements. And in that, for that outcome, the next full area send inspection would be within approximately three years. And then the, the uh, third outcome is where there are deemed to be widespread and or systemic feelings which are leading to significant concerns about the experience and outcome of children and young people. 
and which the area partnership must address urgently. And after that outcome, there would be a monitoring inspection within approximately 18 months, and then a full inspection within approximately three years. As I said, the, the aim of the, the new framework we are proposing is that we're driving continuous improvement and also increasing transparency for everybody. And so as part of that, we'll be asking all local area partnerships to update and publish their strategic SEND plans following full inspections, regardless of inspection outcome. So this, this plan will be separate from any areas that um, where significant or widespread concerns have been raised. Regardless of the outcome, all areas will be asked to produce a, a, and publish a strategic SEND plan. OK, so as we head towards the end of this presentation, we'd just like to talk a little bit about ongoing consultation involvement. And as Catherine mentioned at the beginning, the, consult, the public consultation is live at the moment, and we really appreciate as many of you as possible providing input through um, that live consultation, which will be open until the 11th of September. In addition to that, we're also looking at running additional webinars and focus groups, which will be specific to either the sector that you work in or for parents and carers. And that would be to ask additional questions or to get additional information based on some of the themes of questions that we have been receiving over the last few weeks. We'd like to open the, the webinar now to questions. We may not be able to answer everything, get through everything. We have also had some additional questions that, that we have been sent by people who couldn't attend on the day. Um, shall I start off? Because there were a number of questions around accountability. And I hope we've we've covered that in the presentation, but I just uh, wondered if it would be helpful just to run through that uh, again in terms of the changes that we're making in, in to, to strengthen accountability. You know, we're looking now at having that cycle of inspections. Uh, and one of the things within that cycle, as, as Lee mentioned, was around the engagement meeting. So keeping that spotlight on, on SEND as we go through the year uh, and also um, introducing the new outcomes um, looking at having more precise recommendations within our plans and also that sort of transparency in terms of uh, asking local area partnerships to publish uh, and share their, um, their SEND uh, action plans and what we're not asking for is a separate SEND action plan in addition to the other plans but we're asking that whatever uh, local partners have available they make uh, open to, to um, publish them uh, available. So I hope that helps in terms of accountability. Yeah, I'm just going through that some of the questions in the panel or in the chat panel are around what you've just covered, Catherine. Um, because I can't see the chat panel, so um, just I'm going to have to rely on you here. So we've got um, who will be involved in formulating the action plans, and that would be the whole of the area partnership. So there will be, as, as Catherine said, there would be a number of recommendations in there and also priority actions as well. And the, um, the action plans would involve the whole partnership and we would expect that they would all be involved in formulating them. Um, we've got a question around... Um, some pupils advocating and, and consultation with education settings on experiences. So as part of the methodology that we are proposing, there are a number of visits out to education, health and social care settings. And that would be to, to gather, obviously, the, the widest experience for, for children and young people and their families. So it wouldn't just be education settings that would be um, that would be visited or consulted with. It will be health settings, care settings as well as the range of settings, education settings from early years right through to, to further education. Um, we've got a question, how do we ensure that children and parents are not cherry picked by the organisation? So as part of the methodology that, that we have, there is a, a number of um, sort of sampling techniques for want of a better word, which um, are only done on the day. So there wouldn't be an established list of criteria for those 
children and young people um, to have their experiences um, sort of evaluated by an inspection team. So it would be difficult um, because they would be randomly selected on the inspection by the inspection team and therefore couldn't be cherry picked. Um, We've got a question around sort of the, the time between inspections, Catherine. So five years seems a long time for things to change. And I think it's probably worth saying that you know, the area send inspection is part of a, a wide range of inspection activity that Ofsted and CQC undertake. And all of that inspection activity does sort of um, cross fertilize um, information. So there are a number of different <clears throat> types of inspection activity that the local area partnerships will be part of and also individual settings will be part of. And that information um, is all risk assessed as well. So all of the information sort of about children and young people with SEND in an area would be able to be um, flagged or highlighted as part of other types of inspection activity that Austin and CQC do jointly and um, a single inspectorates as well. Um, we've got a question about multi-academy trust, Catherine, if you want to pick it up about how the framework will judge their effectiveness of MATS and the regions group around quality of education provision. Uh, I think that from, from our perspective, the Area SEND framework is a um, inspection regime around uh, the local partnerships monitoring and oversight. So what we're looking at is how do uh, local areas know what's happening uh, in terms of those young people, children and young people with SEND across their, their local area. So we're not looking specifically at practice that's happening within um, within specific uh, schools or, or settings. Uh, obviously that falls underneath the EIF and the inspections there. Uh, I think, you know, in terms of the area, in terms of the green paper as well, there's obviously work being done at the moment in terms of consulting on, on the approach. There. So we'll be obviously closely looking at the input that's coming back from that. There's also some um, about recent reports in the area, Lee, sorry, about becoming vague and don't show a good reflection of changes, good or bad, just to sort of reinforce that I'm not quite sure um, in terms of what that's, that's referring to, but we're really um, working at the moment on uh, developing a framework for our report so we can be as precise as possible about the recommendations and who is responsible for, for taking those forward. So I just wanted to sort of clarify that. I, I can now see them, by the way. Oh, great. <laughs> um, that's part of our accountability strand that we, we talked about in terms of the, the style of reporting and the precision of reporting as well. Um, under current arrangements, we report on exceptions rather than um, what we would see as expected practice, but we will be changing the reporting style. Um, let's see, we've got um, a question which would fall into co-production. Uh, will parents and children be involved in formulating action plans? And again, you know, everything that in terms of the, the reforms and the, 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 the core of the reforms has not changed. We would expect to see areas are co-producing plans, whether that's strategic plans or in, at an individual level. Um, so that that would still be an expectation of any inspections that, that we carry out. Um. I think this will written statement of actions no longer exist and will the local action plans uh, replace this? Um, what we are looking towards is those areas who have got um, around having systemic weaknesses, widespread and systemic weaknesses. Uh, they will be expected to establish a priority action plan and that will take the place of a written statement of action. So be clear on that. Then there was one question that we had received pre the uh, recording, which was around timings for parents and carers of this particular webinar. Uh, I just wanted to address that, but we uh, recognise that this obviously isn't an ideal time for uh, all parents and carers, but what we have done is put uh, webinars on at different times, so hopefully they will catch different people. And also we are going to be putting in place a recorded, <coughs> excuse me, webinar specifically for parents and carers and you'll also have the opportunity to get involved during uh, our focus group. So I just wanted to be clear on that. Thanks, Lee. 
great, thank you. I think we certainly covered all of these ones. Is there any any other uh, requests that have come in, Catherine? Uh, there was a question around the digital format of education, health and care plans as well. Uh, and just to say that that's obviously under consultation at the moment um, and is obviously uh, with the Department for Education in terms of next steps. Uh, I think the question was around when will this be taking place and what will the training be? So that was one for the, the DfE to take forward as a result of their consultation. So thank you, everybody. I think the heat is now causing a delay <laughs> for all of us. So thank you for your time this afternoon. I hope it's been really useful. And as I say, any more questions, please get in touch with us and we'll get them out. All right. Many thanks. Bye bye.